Don't make me that asshole, Amanda. Don't make me that asshole. <laughs> Don't make me that asshole that doesn't recommend Wreck-It Ralph 2. <laughs> I, uh, okay, okay. If you got kids, they'll probably like this fine. If you saw the trailer for this movie and you're like, that looks like a lot of fun. I laughed at the trailer. I had a good time. You'll probably like this fine. Um, if you're looking for something on par with like a lot of the really surprisingly really good Disney stuff that's been coming out lately, and by lately I mean like the past five, six years, uh, and Pixar material and so forth, this ain't up to standards, man. It just ain't. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. This has a very good message. This has uh, a, a very good, you know, kind of idea behind it. Honestly, if I was like a, a producer or somebody at Disney and somebody told me this idea, I'd think it's a good idea. Um, but uh, it, it just doesn't flow, man. It, it doesn't connect from one thing to the next. And I just, I, it wasn't grabbing me. I just wasn't feeling it. I'm... Oh, I feel so, I feel so dirty saying that because it's Wreck-It Ralph and I, and I really liked the first film and, and I thought it was cute and nice and, and had a good moral and uh, the, the sequel just did, did not live up to the expectation that I felt a good movie like that deserved. I mean, like, like a really good follow-up, um, but it's not, it's not awful. It's not a terrible film. It's not even really that bad. Like I said, for a kid's film about a little video game character that goes into the internet, it's fine. Uh, but, but for the adults and Disney snobs like me that really, really sort of put them on a pedestal and really expect them to meet those expectations and really, really set the standards high, I mean, you could argue that's not fair, but Disney is like, they really do set the standards on so many things, and, uh, and Wreck-It Ralph kinda did too in some respects. Uh, so, so let's talk about it. Uh, the setup, I think, uh, a lot of you probably know, you watched the trailer, um, it's, uh, Ralph and Penelope go into the internet, uh, her game is gonna be turned off unless they can get this new part, on eBay, or as he calls it, eBoy, uh, or it, he comes up with a bunch of different names. Uh, so uh, they have to go get the part, somehow come up with money to pay for this part because they put like a ridiculous amount of money on it to win it. And uh, they find all sorts of various ways they can make that money online. Honestly, if it was this easy, <laughs> I feel like a lot of other people would have done it. Um, but I guess I guess it kind of makes sense because they kind of stumble into it. They and this is part of the problem. Okay, so they go to something called BuzzTube, and it sort of ties into all the things that like are big memes and sort of these funny little videos and stuff like that. And it's one of those things where it's like but they can't say BuzzFeed and they can't say YouTube, even though they're in the movie, they're like in the background, there they are, they they can't really connect it to that, and that, that's part of the problem, that, that, that's a very small part. So, uh, so they have to get the money to get this part to save her game, Penelope's game, but then that's kind of abandoned. Uh, that's kind of not a thing anymore. They, they just kind of... Uh, forget about it, uh, and not even really forget about it, just something else kind of catches their interest, and then that becomes the story. And that's one of the major problems of this, is that it just kind of, with the first film, you get it. He's sick of doing the same thing over and over. He's sick of being the bad guy, not even doing the same thing over and over, he's just sick of being the bad guy, and so he wants to be the hero, and everyone can identify with that, so he has to go and, you know, get something that recognizes him as a hero, and he comes across this, goes into a different realm, and comes across this little kid that he befriends, and even though he doesn't become the hero in the way he thought, he becomes a hero in a different way to this kid. And in the movie, he still has the little uh, metal, you know, the little sugar cookie metal, and it's very cute. Um, everyone can identify with that. This starts off, our world is gonna disappear, we need to save it identifiable, we can all relate to that, uh, and then suddenly halfway through, 
It's about, no, nah, I think I belong here now. This is my new home. I, I want to be here. And it's about another person accepting that. And the thing is, it's not like it doesn't set it up at all. Like they are dropping kind of hints in there, but it's kind of done in a way that doesn't feel natural. Um... For example, the character wants to go and be somewhere else. Feels like the in the previous film, this was the character that wanted to belong, was an outcast, and wanted to actually belong somewhere, and finally gets, you know, to that place that they want to be at the end. Where the other character uh, is okay doing the same thing, you know, uh, you know, has done the same thing over and over, to just, just wants to be, you know, it, it kind of is seen as something greater than what he is. It's seen, as, you know, get some recognition. So I feel like this should have been switched. The character that wants to go into another realm uh, should probably be the other one in this. It should probably be switched around. Uh, and I think that's one of the big problems is that it doesn't feel like what the characters are doing uh, kind of goes along this natural journey that, like, a character should be going through. They kind of say, well, I'm feeling this right now, and then something comes along to, you know, help them with that, where it doesn't feel like they really went through a long journey. They went through sort of all these uh, different stepping stones and these sort of twists and turns that really tie into their character that would lead them to this. It just sort of seems like they said they want this now. And everything in this just kind of jumps from, well, now we're going to do this thing. Well, now we're going to do that thing. Well, now we're interested in this. Well, now we're interested in that. And it kind of goes back and forth constantly until we go from, I don't want to lose my home to, I don't want to lose my friend. Who no, no, Even that's not right. It's, I don't want to lose my home to, now I want this home to, hey, I'm okay with everything, to, hey, I don't want to lose my friend. And it's kind of these different elements that are interesting elements that can be made, you know, really cool if they stuck to just one of them, but they're kind of throwing these four different, you know, four different puzzle pieces in there and they don't quite match up. Uh, and the internet itself in this, you've seen everywhere. This is every... Uh, a sci-fi show, cartoon, comic, whatever, that has said, let's turn the internet into a world. It's all of that, and you've seen it, except it's Disney, so you can't add the edge to it. Like Futurama, that's a great example. Uh, you know, it went into going to the internet, and, and there they are, and it looks exactly like how it does here, like every person that does going into the internet looks like, and... But Futurama, that's for adults, so they can get away with a lot more adult jokes, and they can really address stuff on the internet. Here, when they go by Twitter, what great commentary you could do with that? They don't, because it's Disney, so you just see some birds flying around, and you see a bunch of pictures of, like, Grumpy Cat being passed around. That That's their Twitter commentary. <laughs> uh, you know, it, YouTube is somewhere in the background, but e even when they do their satire of, like, YouTube and Facebook and just kind of social media in general, uh, it's just kind of along the lines of, like, well, just getting a lot of shares is good. Um, and even, like, it, it, even, like, Ralph goes and looks at the comments, which, as everybody knows, you never read the comments, but... It, you can't go, with comments, you have to go all the way, or you have to go something beyond Disney, you know, with this. You know, the movie's friggin' PG, and it's like, why not, you know what, I don't even know that. I'm just assuming it's PG, because every G movie is PG now, for no reason, except to get slightly older kids in there to think it's cool, because, you know, Disney used to be really good at saying, hey, we're G and we don't care, we're doing our own thing, but now they, they gotta put the P in front of there, because... I don't know, they throw in a foot-sized joke like in Frozen and suddenly has to be PG. It's totally dumb, but... Shit, I hope this isn't G now, because I'm really going to look like a dumbass. But regardless, I'm getting off track. Um, you are still not allowed to do proper commentary on the internet without kind of having a little bit of an edge to it, without taking a little bit of a step. And this is trying to do commentary, and it's... And it, it's not even really doing commentary until the second half. And the second half is where it almost starts to get interesting, but it so nails the hammer on the head that it, it's just, I don't know. 
There's no interpretation of it. There's, which I don't need like a ton of interpretation, but like a little bit, but this is so spelled out. So, okay, so without getting too much into spoilers, uh, the person that wants to go to a different world, or wants to leave the arcade behind, um, you know, the other friend doesn't want that person to go. So they want to corrupt the game. They want to glitch it up. They want to ruin the world. Which is already a really douchey move. Uh, you know, somewhere the other person says, this isn't what true friends do. And I'm like, yeah. It, like, it's a really unrelatable thing. Like, it's one thing to not want a friend leave, but you are just going to this really bizarre extreme that also seems really out of character. And I just wasn't liking this character now. I mean, it's one of those things where you're kind of watching it and like, well, why am I supposed to be rooting for this person now? I, I don't like this person doing this. I mean, this person seemed really cool and it just doesn't seem like what this person would do. So, uh, so they have to go in and uh, corrupt the system and get the, again, the subtle commentary. Um, they have to look for insecurities in the system. In the internet, they have to look for insecurities. Get it? Get it? Like, as, you could have just said problems. You could have just said, you could have even said glitches, like tying it back to Penelope or something, but it's like, no, they said insecurities. And just guess where that's gonna go. Just take a wild guess where that's gonna go with the internet and program insecurities. It goes exactly where you think it's gonna go. So you get a little bit of creative imagery with, uh, multiplying the insecurity. Again, I won't give too much away, uh, but it results in another giant monster. And again, it, it's it's one of those detailed giant monsters, I'll give it that, where when you look really close at it, you see what makes it up and it's actually kind of creepy, which I enjoy. Um, and on the one hand, it's like there's no true villain in this. And I, I like films that do that, where, you know, it could be so easy to put a villain in there, but they don't necessarily do it. Uh, but at the same time, this is weirdly a movie that could have used a true villain, because the way they sort of put all the blame and insecurity on this one character just seemed really out of nowhere. I, I mean, I guess they're building it up a touch, but connected to the last movie, and even the beginning of this movie, like, it, it just doesn't connect. Like, this is something that would destroy a friendship and maybe that's just cynical me talking about it i don't know but it's one of those things where i'm like i'm just watching this and it's like again if this realm existed and this world existed and someone did this to me like i i'd be like no that th this person's out this person's unstable this I, I can't be friends with this person uh so just the idea that we're supposed to still relate with this relationship or with this connection uh, after this one character does something really bad, I, I, I don't, I don't follow it. I, I did not make that connection, even though, I mean, the analogy they're making about insecurities, and not a very vague analogy, but, you know, the analogy they make it is legit, and it is interesting, uh, but if you really want to do this, you, you kind of have to go several steps further. I was gonna say all the way, but it's like the internet is so popular and so everywhere, like, I'm like, oh, okay, you, you can kind of, you can take one or two, two steps back, but this is just, I don't know, you can't do it in this Disney kind of fairy tale realm. And it never really dawned on me going into this that of course you wouldn't be able to do this. You know, it, with the brand that Disney has made, all the Disney princesses are in this. Of course you're not going to be able to dive into the real pros and the real cons of the internet, you know? And it's something where, if you're watching the, the trailer for this, and you're not laughing that much, you're going to get the same experience with the movie. When I was watching the trailer, I was like, man, this... I mean, it's Wreck-It Ralph, so I mean, it's gotta be good, but, uh, man, they sure do show a lot of the, the princesses in there. Like, that really goes on a long time, and it got a few laughs, but, but man, and uh, nothing that major. That's, like, the funniest part of the movie. <laughs> like, the stuff with the princesses, at least in that section, they come back again at the end, and it's kind of dumb, but, but the, the section where Penelope actually goes in and meets the princesses is kind of funny. Uh, like, they draw a connection to... 
Penelope is trying to find what she really wants, and they say, have you tried looking at water? And I didn't get that. And then they said, well, no, all the princesses, you know, we suddenly realize what we want and we sing a song when we look at water. And I thought about it and they kind of listed a few examples. I'm like, that's a really good point. I never thought about that. That was like actually really, really funny. And uh, I, I don't know, it, the, that felt like the closest to kind of, you know, poking holes in the armor, kind of showing that, it, yeah, they're Disney, but they can, you know, sort of show their flaws as well. Uh, and I felt like, I feel like we needed more of that with the internet, but you can't, because everyone knows what's on the internet. Everyone knows, you know, how they go to the dark web in this. Of course you're not going to be able to do as crazy or insane jokes as you want to do with the dark net in this. So you had to settle for this really G-rated version of the Darknet, which is honestly nothing. Uh, it, it just kind of feels like another version of the Emoji Movie. You know, uh, it, honestly... Okay, I can't say the Emoji Movie made better analogies. <laughs> I, I won't go that far. But it's one of those things where it's like, even like, I don't know, the colors seemed a little bit more vibrant in the Emoji Movie, and even though the worlds look very similar, uh, but like I said, everybody that's done a version of the internet has done this world. It's always this world. The light blue, sort of very flat, you know, just some very basic shapes, sort of blue, white, you know, these very square objects walking around, square faces or round faces, and, and that's it. And I just feel like, is the internet really so boring? They always talk about how just vast and never-ending it is and so many possibilities, and how come we always come back to the exact same designs? for this place, this incredible place, you know, where like anything is possible, any great thing, any terrible thing, and any, anything is possible on the internet. And we keep coming back to the same setup. Um, so, yeah, the big thing too, maybe I could have gotten through it a little bit better if it was funnier. And It's just not that funny. And it's not even like they're throwing Okay, like the Emoji Movie. We'll try throwing a lot of jokes at you. Ugh, they don't work, and they're annoying. You know, that's why something like that, is, you know, you see it's really bad. Uh, where this, it's either not throwing that many jokes at you, or the jokes it does throw at you are not really good, but, the, but they're not groaners either. Uh, they're just kind of meh. Like, well, yeah, that's the obvious joke you would make there, you know, kind of thing. Um, so... Yeah, I don't know. That This is not... I feel bad because it's hard to say this is like a bad movie. It's not a movie I see and I'm like, oh my god, this is just... I can't watch it. But if I saw this like halfway through and somebody said I could never find out what happens in the rest of it, I'd be okay. You know, I wouldn't have to be like, no, I have to find out. I have to... I'm so invested in their journey and what they're gonna discover next. It's like, I'd, I'd really be fine. Uh, where in the first film, I couldn't. I'd have to know what's going on. And the first film was funny because it was almost... It was almost a letdown that there weren't as many video game characters or tie-ins as I wanted. And now compared to this one, it's a lot more than, you know, that I gave credit for. But it's still one of those where it's like, I kind of put that aside because I was so invested in the story and I was so invested in these characters and what they were going through. Uh, and in this one, like, it opens up with when you got Fix It Felix and I, I forget her name, the Jane Lynch character. Uh, they volunteer to adopt some of the racers, you know, all the racers from Sugar Rush are little kids, uh, so they volunteer to adopt them, and I'm like, this is gonna be funny, this is gonna be really hilarious, oh my god, like, this couple is already so funny, this tiny little fix a guy, and this giant warrior woman, and, and they're together, you know, the total opposites, and then you have, now, they're gonna have these little kids, and the... A guy who's even warning them, like, you know, ah, this, kids aren't exactly what you think. It's like, oh, it'll be wonderful. It'll be just what we need to spice up our relationship. Like, it's really setting up that this is going to be something really crazy, really insane, and really funny. Never comes back again until the end. Like, why even have that there? Why have that set up if you're never going to do anything? Why build it up if you're not going to constantly deliver 
you know, with, with the jokes. And there's one joke at the end, and it's cute, you know, but it's like, why have that set up? Why even have them in the movie? So, yeah, and the other characters they discover in this, the only one that got a legitimate laugh out of me is this character named Gort. And he never says a thing. He's a throwaway joke. Honestly, I doubt anyone else will laugh at him, but he made me laugh because, like, it's this guy who's kind of, he's this shady, you know, guy who sells ads, you know, and make money playing video games and stuff. And just whenever he needs something, he goes, Gort! And it's just this little guy whose eyes look this way. You don't even see most of his face. And when he hands something to someone, especially if they're tall, his arm just slowly and awkwardly reaches out and gives it to them. And it just goes totally quiet. And it's so weird <laughs> and so uncomfortable. I love it. Like, to me, that felt like the internet. Like, that's a lot of the internet. But, yeah, outside of that, like... Any kind of commentary outside of the end, which works okay, you know, uh, you know, with the insecurity thing. Again, it's very on the nose, you know, but it's it's not a bad lesson. But everything else about going to like BuzzTube or BuzzFace or FaceBuzz, whatever it was called, uh, it just seems like stuff that not only have we seen in other places, but we've seen in the Emoji Movie. Like, like that's... Wreck it, Roush, you're not to steal from the emoji movie. <laughs> you know, it just seems like this has been done. Uh, so, yeah, for me, this was kind of a letdown. I, I guess I shouldn't have been that surprised because, again, it is, it is Disney. I mean, think about this. Disney trying to tackle the internet. Like, this is kind of destined to be very bland and blasé. But at the same time, like, they... They tackled the Hunchback of Notre Dame, and I thought that was great. You know, there, there's a lot of things that didn't work in it, but, but I thought it was great. So maybe I was thinking this would be something similar. Like, they would be smart enough to jump through those, you know, through those hoops and over those hurdles, you know, in their own clever way, their own imaginative Disney way. And it didn't quite work uh, for me. And a lot of that comes down to I just did not connect with the character's journey and what they were working towards. Um, I worked with their connection okay for a little bit, you know, between Ralph and uh, Penelope. I, I thought, particularly in the first, like, 10, 20 minutes, they had a really nice connection. I like seeing them hang out and going to different games and stuff. Uh, but that made it all the more strange when you see, like, the breakup, like, in the last third. And, and like I said, that really out-of-character thing that happens. In the first film, uh, one character has to do something, has to, like, destroy this car. And everything has so logically built up to why that character has to do that, and why the character felt like that this was the right thing to do. And it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, I know this part in the movie where they kind of have to hate each other, but you see how that character got there. And this one, you really don't. It's just, well, I don't want to see this person go, so I'm just going to ruin the thing they love. And that's just like, no, they're too good of friends for that. Like, they understand each other more than that. And we had a whole movie showing that. So, yeah, that, that, that just did not, that, that, didn't, that didn't connect with me. It, it just did not pull me in. Um, but if you're just looking for a little waste of time to show your kids that has an okay moral that, I don't know, especially with, like, kids going on the internet younger and younger, I mean, it might not be a bad thing to show them. It's like, yeah, it's fine. Uh, and if you watch the trailer and you laughed a lot, it's those kind of jokes throughout the whole thing, so you, you'll probably dig it. Uh, but for me, I didn't laugh much at the trailer, and I really thought the movie was going to be better. I, I really thought it was going to find more clever ways to work within their disadvantages of being a super family-friendly kids film, and yet talking about the internet. Uh, it, but it really didn't. I, I felt like this film needed, like, two more solid rewrites. I, like, the ideas are there. They're good ideas. Um, but they just were not fleshed out enough. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry. I, I feel awful because I love Wreck-It Ralph and I this film's getting great reviews, man. <laughs> like it's not, it, like right now it's at 96 percent, something like that, and uh, it it just was not sucking me in. Uh, and I really wanted to be sucked in by this movie because I love these characters. I love the idea of them going to the internet, but I feel like I feel like the Disney brand was stopping them from really making some legit good commentary and. 
the disadvantages they had to work through just shined all the more in this. And I feel like they really had to make some sacrifices to the characters that I really like to sort of tie into this brand that they have to make a message that's not a bad message. But you had to sacrifice a little bit of what makes the characters likable and relatable. I mean, it's okay to not necessarily like a character, but you had to be able to relate to them. I just felt like this was not relatable. Um, so, I don't know. I... I feel like I'm going to be the only asshole. I, I feel like everyone else is going to love this movie. They're going to love seeing the princesses all together and Penelope with Ralph and then having fun and, and making poop jokes and stuff. But, like, I don't know. I l Let me know if I'm the only a-hole here because I feel like I'm going to be the only one. But uh, maybe I'm not alone. Um, but I feel like I'm going to. But nevertheless, if it, if you really dug it and you really enjoyed it, enjoy it. There's really nothing, like harmful or bad in it i mean like i said the the only thing i kind of take a little bit of issue with that might be a little dangerous is again sort of like the how easily the friends kind of forgive each other where one friend did something really bad in my opinion like the way they create this world and the environment and what this character does i think is really freaking bad and it's hard to relate with but uh but maybe that's just me so um yeah, guys, that's about it. Uh, again, I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't be more positive on this movie, but, uh, uh, yeah, I can't help what I feel, man. So, um, yeah, that's about it, and I will talk to you guys later. Take care.